All right. How are you doing today? Happy Monday. <laughs> Special guest with us today, Mr. Obi Fernandez. Whoop, whoop, down here. Whoop. I'm going to see this right away. <laughs> Kick him out. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll mute. Hello. <laughs> What's up? Hey, How's everyone. Going? If you are in the chat, say hi. We'd love to be able to see who's here with us. We've got some great questions for Obi. We thought it's been a while since we've had him on. AJR. Hey, Nick Imps. Stay to the game. Welcome, welcome. I'm what are we listening to in the now. background? What are, you, what are you playing, DJ? <laughs> what am I playing today? Obviously, some record shop artists. We've got Kaiser up with 1981. Nice. I did like cool. that one quite a bit. All right, I'm going to post in general. DJ Redbird. I like that. That's a good sounding DJ name. Ooh. I just need someone to hold my hand the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know some people that could help. Hey, hey everyone. So we're going to be asking Obi some questions today. If you have any questions, pop them into the chat. Cade is on and moderating for us. So he'll make sure that we catch them. Even if uh, it seems like we missed them, he's going to pop them into um, a document that we have going so we can keep track of all your questions. So post them in the chat. We will make sure to answer all of your questions. Hey everyone. Hey. And I guess, Obi, to start us off, um, we had some really exciting activity last week on Record Shop with our very first exclusive drop for one artist. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, let's welcome, well, let's make sure, I wonder if we have any uh, Fat Rat fans on watching us right now, if you got anyone. Give a Which shout out in the, in the chat if you're a Fat Rat fan. I'll say hey. Wish they could just show off the wristbands for us, right? <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah. Be uh, nice. yeah. So I, you know, I, the Fat Rat, yeah, our first big, uh, exclusive artist uh, campaign that we've done like a specific drop for. Uh, Todd Terry was probably the the What the House pack was probably the closest thing to it before, but it was kind of a just a shadow of things to come and the direction that we're headed in. I've kind of dropped some ideas, um, some hints about where we're going with this in the future. But there was always, from the very beginning, from the initial uh, documentation that I wrote down in the white paper and also in some of the private business plan um, stuff that I wrote about what the what we were actually going to do, we, we knew we would start with these Genesis drops. In it, and I literally thought it might be just one Genesis drop. Um, and we, we ended up using Genesis in this kind of way looser term to mean kind of like all our initial drops. Um, but I think, uh, you know, potentially my, my first nugget of, <laughs> of this chat is that, you know, we're, we're not going to be doing any more Genesis drops because we're kind of through the initial phase of the company and we're moving into the next phase, which is really has to do with um, focusing on activating specific artists, fans which is what we have successfully done uh with the fat wrap we uh you know it, so it took a while we we probably put a little bit too much packs on sale uh if we had sold two or three thousand packs it would have sold out within an hour easily um but we knew that if we did that um a lot of them would be locked out and we wanted to make sure that we that we reached as many fat rat fans as possible and we had our doubts from the very beginning about exactly how well our marketing would work because it's the first time that we're doing this on a big scale it's the first time that we're doing this with the fat rat and it's you know there's just a lot to learn and there's a lot of opportunities for failure and when we look in retrospect at what we're doing here we see a lot of positive signs and we also see a lot of room for for improvement uh which we will apply to to the future but specifically with this drop i mean we had um, an influx of about 200 new registered users per day. It put us in excess of, I think, 20 or 23,000, I forget the exact stat, registered users for the site. Um, we had, I believe, over um, close to 600 unique uh, fat rat purchasers 
that you know participated in, in buying packs when all was said and done, which meant that we were able to achieve a significant percentage of the people who normally buy packs, uh, you know, in on the platform. And you know, we'll see if they stay engaged. I mean, that's part of your team's responsibility, um, you know. But but the idea is that as as some or let's hope most of these players that bought packs start becoming more and more involved in the record shot e ecosystem and learning how to play the game and trade and you know get hooked on some of the game mechanics and things like that and start noticing some of the other cool artifacts and then hopefully even some of the other music that they do become more full-fledged players right love it yeah definitely that's the hope and vision it's good to see so many new faces in the discord and also joining in the fat rat discord i've been manning a channel specifically for us over there and seeing the excitements from some of their players or the cards they pull out it's just been really cool having uh some fresh faces and seeing some some excitement newfound excitement um but the fat rat that's a huge name like he's a very well accomplished like esteemed artist like love his music great person can you talk a little bit more about like how that relationship came to be with record shop uh yeah he was a referral from our great partners over at label radar oh. uh, give a shout out to to ed and derek over there uh those guys are great they they've really helped us out and we have a really close relationship we're looking to do more with label radar and like that's you know probably my next nugget if you go check out what later label radar opportunities are uh, you do a little bit of research and homework there you'll get an idea of some of the things we're planning to do as far as what you can use your coins for and what you can use some of those release plus cards for in 2022. um so lots of great stuff you know brewing there um but yeah no the, it came through and then um eric did a great job because i mean we've been talking to the fat red for months and months and months i think since before we even did our first drop in august and you notice that in the quality of the cards and uh when all is said and done you'll see that in the quality of the the whole campaign the way it comes together uh there's there's rare cards there's legendary cards there's crafting there's all this like deep dive into the lore there's the handwritten notes from chris's notebook you know when he describes uh what he was thinking when he created some of these characters and elements of his universe uh, and of course the music, which, you know, is, is really wonderful and is part of what gets everyone so excited about it. He's, you know, Chris is super talented and he's got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of fans. Um, you know, we, we, we were doing a little bit of a retrospective today and talking about how to activate more of them. And, and we do have expectations of being able to do that. So like now that we've done the first one, we can look at, okay, we got this percentage of people to respond who had the wristbands. How are we going to activate more of them? And of course, this is all great for the existing ecosystem. You know, more new blood in the market means additional expenditures. It grows the overall market cap of everything, which means that prices don't have to continue be, uh, being diluted by the addition of, of new inventory. And um, one of the things I can say is that, you know, we are we're a learning organization. Okay. Like that, that's, um, that's something I don't talk about too often. It's a little bit of a peek behind the, the curtain, but the philosophy of the way that myself, the other directors and the leadership of this company run record shop is to be a learning organization where, you know, we don't set a plan and just blindly follow it, you know, for months at a time. Like we have a general idea of the direction we want to go to, but we're evolving this thing. There's so much innovation. It, it's a brand new thing in the world, you know, like what we're doing doesn't really exist in its incarnation. So it would be silly to, you know, to, to set out a six to 12 month plan and just try to execute against it. You have to be reactive, right? So like, um, initially we were thinking this would be a 10 week campaign. Um, it's probably not going to be a 10 week campaign. We're probably going to adjust it. You know, we have, we know we have to adjust the pack counts down. We know that a lot of people were upset because they were getting duplicates of cards because of the way that we did the reminting, uh, or not the, uh, the um, uh, extended release, I think uh, we called it, you know, cards that, that could be reminted in future packs. Um, you know, it's all about change. Like we're on a, you know, we're on a journey here. We're, what we are learning though, is to do a better job, you know, of, 
trying to communicate professionally and, and more thoroughly and be more transparent. And those of you that have been together with us from the very beginning know that that has been um, a long evolution, right? Like in the beginning, when we first launched, we didn't say anything about what we were dropping. We didn't say the amount. We didn't say what was in the packs. I mean, it was a total mystery. The whole campaign was built around mystery. And we've pivoted 180 degrees, you know, towards being transparent about what exactly is in the pack, giving as much details as possible. And we're going to keep doing more of that. Um, and some of the features we have lined up, uh, I was hoping we'd get them done this year, but you know, next year would be like being able to preview the music that's in a pack and stuff like that. And then gifting and trading, you know, to be able to, to share cards with others and stuff like that. But by the way, guys, I ramble in case you haven't heard. <laughs> so no. let, let's make this uh, more interactive. Like definitely cut me off or ask me questions. Yeah, sure. No, I mean, I'm, I'm loving it too. It's all insights for me. Uh, I don't know how you feel, Lisa. Yeah, I think that's why we're both just sitting here and we're like, this is awesome to hear. Um, <laughs> and as a at coming at, from the user's perspective, which I wasn't, it wasn't long ago that I was a user. Um, it's, that was one thing I really appreciated as a user was knowing that you were really listening, you were really learning. Um, it was just something that was so obvious the whole time. And uh, yeah, it's, so it's nice to sit on this side now and to know that it is also part of the internal how we work is that we're it isn't exactly what you said we don't just make a plan and stick to it no matter what it, it i want to react i want to react to some of the questions i see in stream chat um yeah, let's do it. Sh you know shout out to some of the regular players um i see finn i see jr boston the reg uh, asked a really good question what can we expect in terms of monetary value on common cards i'll just read your question reg um Considering we have many artists coming in, is it safe to say that common cards should be should generally be considered lower monetary value? And should users be expected to buy all new packs or do you expect people to pick and choose down the road? This is a great question. I've been meaning to blog about this. It has to do with like set completion and whether you should buy new, new packs. And, I, and a few weeks ago, I actually made some comments and um, some of them got thrown in my face a little bit uh, recently, but it's basically like, you know, I was like, I can't really understand why everyone would buy every single set, right? There's kind of like this disconnect between where we come at it, you know, from the record shop side where, you know, to us, it's like really, really obvious and natural that we're going to have dozens of sets, you know, this year and going into next year, we're going to start having hundreds and then potentially thousands of sets. And it's as the architect of the game, it didn't really make sense to me from the beginning. I bit my tongue because I was kind of like wanting to see what would happen. But then eventually I did start saying like, I'm not sure why someone would just buy every single set, you know, that we drop because the, the idea is that we're a platform for artist fan engagement. And our, our main audience is not NFT speculators. Our main audience is the fans that are coming in for those artists, like you're seeing now with the with the, the Fat Rat fan. Fans coming in and buying the Fat Rat packs. You, Someone pointed out, they were like, why are there seven sets or whatever it is, you know, for the Fat Rat? It's like, because that's catering towards the Fat Rat's plan for his fans, right? The Fat Rat just happens to be probably like the, the biggest and baddest, you know, incarnation of how you do set completion rewards and, uh, you know, crafting and all this stuff. Whereas some of our other artists, you know, especially the ones that signed up early on, they had no idea what they were getting into, right? Like, you know, this was all brand new and it was kind of like, trust us, we're going to make you some money. This is a new thing that, you know, you should be excited about. And now we're going back and we're saying, okay, look, this is what the community wants. Believe us, we listen to you guys, like guys and gals in the community. We do listen to you. We do take copious notes. It hurts us when we can't react fast enough, but if we're talking about things that are outside of record shops control, like, you know, set completion rewards, airdrop controls, things like that, like we can't invent those whole cloth. You know, we could we could maybe do some set completion rewards that have nothing to do with the set, uh, but that doesn't seem very authentic, right? Like, so what we're doing is we're building one, a creative relations department, or basically like an account management department with our partners, we have a guy who's ex uh, Beatport who has a lot of experience. Uh, we call him P Dub, and he's in the process of hiring a team so that 
every partner that we have, every artist can be, you know, have a representative of a record shop that works with them to figure out, okay, this is what the community needs. And this is how you can reward your fans on the, the, the platform. Now, obviously, if someone tells me, hey, I'm, I love this shit. I love NFTs. I love electronic music. I love everything that you're bringing down. That's why I'm buying all sets. I'm like, fantastic. Go ahead and keep being you. You know, like, that's amazing. You're, you're, you're a terrific member of the community and we love you and we're going to try to do stuff for you. But I got to admit, like, and I got to say it, like some of the expectations that are put onto us by some of the early uh, players are just unreasonable. They're, 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 we just cannot leave, live up to the kinds of timelines that you guys are expecting. And it's really, really hard for me. I have to bite my tongue really, really hard sometimes when we're in general chat to say like, slow your roll, like patience is needed. You know, I know that it's a question of faith. Sometimes it's a question of people that, you know, maybe aped in around the second or third drop and are now feeling like they lost a lot of money, you know, because of perceived value of their collection has gone down. But I always said from the very beginning that this was a multi-year pro you know, project, that this was a long-term play, you know, five to 10 years, be the next Spotify, create the future of music. You know, that, that the early investors, you know, uh, in this project, the, you know, the whales that came in in gen one and made a lot of money and are still positive, no matter how much the market has gone down, that they were able to make a significant amount of money is incidental to the long-term plan for this platform, which is to revolutionize the world of music in favor of artists. Um, so I know I'm being a little blunt here, but I mean, I think that's the purpose of this fireside chat is, you know, to be able to like transparently get out the, you know, the, the truth of the situation from our perspective and how we see it instead of the disjointed and, you know, adversarial way that it gets communicated, um, you know, in general chat sometimes. Yeah, no, I mean, it's hard say. to, sorry, go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> I've heard you say a few times, like many times, not a few times, many, many times that you don't like using the term NFT when we're talking about mm -hmm. collectibles on our platform. And I think you've just outlined that so well that we're not here. Like, and I try to think back to like when you'd go into a literal physical record shop, you wouldn't be going through and buying every single record in the store. Right? Yeah. So yeah, no, why, of course. Are we, why are we expecting this to be different? It we, we, we don't expect it and you know it'll it, as we bring in successive waves of fans that are coming in for a specific artist or a specific brand or for a specific challenge you know it'll become apparent that you know like if you're a trans fan you're probably going to collect the trans artists and you're not going to care that much about other genres if you are uh, you know, primarily interested in being ahead of the curve and like listening to stuff that's like out there and new and new artists and like, spe you know, special in that way. Those are the kind of artists you'll collect, you know, sort of thing. If you're mostly in interested in classic stuff, since we have like a whole slew of classic artists that are coming, you know, uh, Juan Atkins, you know, like people of Todd Terry's generation, Crystal Waters, um, you know, some of those kinds of artists and you come in specifically for that, then that that's what you're going to be interested in. And if you're a record shop fan and you just like having everything and you have the bankroll to do it, I mean, needless to say, don't spend money that you need, right? Like I, I've had people hit me up by a you know, direct message on Discord and be like, yo, I need to cash out like right now. I need to withdraw because I don't have money to buy presents for my kids. And I'm like, you know, I, I feel for you, but why did you put money in that you need to buy presents for your kids? Like, seriously, like this is I, I understand that there's the you know, there's a temptation. It is fun. It is, you know, can be even maybe a little bit of addicting. There's certainly the thrill of speculation, and everything like that. But but you can't put that on us. You know, like we've said since the beginning, like, hey, buy the stuff you like. Follow the fans that you like. You know, there's no necessity to to buy every single freaking thing that we drop yeah no and i know we're doing everything we can for those people too like i mean a lot of the teams going way out of the way to to build processes to make sure we can try and take care of them but yeah it's it's mm -hmm. a lot to try and handle um yeah. but I'm, I'm sure those users appreciate trying to just trying to get it taken care of sweet uh where were we? I see we just got joined by Jonathan, if he wants to come on. 
Oh yeah, Jonathan's here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me add him here. Him in. And I'll get I'll get our names all fixed up while uh, he joins. Whoop! Just kidding. He just left. <laughs> Never mind. It's just the three of us. So I should clarify that Jonathan's our chief product officer. He's the one that has written uh, one or two of the roadmap recaps. And um, recently, there were there was some commentary by uh, Danvers, aka Socio Technica, and 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 I think this is not this is not something that's unique to to Danvers. I mean, other people have said it like. You know, as CEO, I need to focus on the things that a CEO should be doing at this stage in, a, in the company's history. And that's very, very quickly going to become fundraising for Series A, in which we're hoping to raise at least 50 to 100 million, potentially a lot more. Um, and that's where we're going to be able to um, see the kind of growth and expansion that realistically puts us in a position to be the future of music five to 10 years from now. Like right now we're not, we're nobodies, right? Like we're at an infant scale, but once we do our series a, uh, then we can begin the kind of marketing and expansion into other genres and like hiring of new talent and things like that, that would let us start somewhat rationally, reasonably having a shot at becoming the future of music. Once that happens, like, I'm not going to have time to be in the Discord every day. I'm not going to have time to be writing blog posts, you know, describing our roadmap. Uh, admittedly, some of those roadmap discussions were just me, but they were at a time where I was the only one thinking about that stuff. And now we have entire teams of people thinking about that stuff. So it's no longer appropriate for me to be the only person to, you know, to be writing those things or to be seen as the... Um, the one who's setting the roadmap. So that's one of the reasons that Jonathan is starting to become a more significant figure, right? Like he'll, he'll be the one the community turns to if they want answers about that. The no, music's we'll... a little loud, by the way. <laughs> Just turn yeah. it down. It's a little loud. Okay. Yeah. DJ Redbird. Yeah. Back in the mix. He's in the red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Awesome. Great. Yeah, no, and it's been so awesome like having you in the community. I know the community really appreciates all your insight and like joining and like really helping out with, you know, any questions. But yeah, I mean, I definitely agree that, you know, it's going to be really, I'm sure it's already incredibly difficult for you to do, much less as things move forward and move uh, and progress. Yeah. The um, I don't know if I answered your original question. You said something about me not really liking the term NFT. I mean, if you've ever bought an expensive wine bottle, sometimes they have like that little hologram sticker on them or a lot of things have that have like proof of authenticity will sometimes have like a little sticker or stamp or something that, you know, guarantees it. Or if you buy like a artwork, you know, like a limited edition print or something like that, like you'll have um a little certificate of authenticity and then also of course has like a little pencil with like one out of 500 or whatever like to me musicians create music you know music musicians create fan experiences um albums and eps and stuff like that um they don't create nfts like to me nft is an implementation detail having to do with the certificate of orientation yeah the music's getting really loud cutting it out this track okay so yeah to me to me it's never it's never been about creating nfts and i always react badly when on the team you know itself inside a record shop you know they call them they call our product nfts our product is are not nfts and we want to survive the crap, you know, the NFT crashes that are sure to come. Like there's a rational exuberance, let's say, in the NFT markets. And the NFT market has declined quite a bit. And since, you know, someone someone popped into Discord recently and was like, have you noticed that the decline here maps directly to the decline in NFTs overall? And that is not surprising because a lot of our community are essentially NFT collectors or in, in, you know, and speculators. So it's not surprising that no matter what, we have specifically going on at record shop with supply and demand, we would still be tracking somewhat similarly to the overall 
oversupply of NFTs in the general NFT market. And to me, that that's um, that's a reality we have to deal with, but it's also disappointing, uh, you know, because it means we haven't broken through to the mainstream music fans yet, um, which is something we're planning to do in 22. Um, Obi, what do you envision like as in for artists who are on the platform in 2022, once we're getting to that point where, uh, sorry, just reading that comment about the music, maybe I'll just mute it for now. Um, but how do you see this like technology of NFTs and our collectibles on our platform? How do you see artists? being able to actually utilize that to activate their fans and um, like, have you, if, if you were one of the artists, which you are one of the artists, like what would be your plan of attack? To, to activate the, the music, the, the fans of the artists. Yeah. You know, it's the same, it's the same value proposition that it's always been. It's been, you know, it's been creating exclusive music and experiences that are interesting to that fans artists, right? Um, the fat rats doing that. It's a canonical example. It's the case study that will go back, you know, probably all of next year, potentially for years to show kind of like where we got our start because of the amount of creative energy that's been put into um his campaign right there there were dozens and dozens of cards a lot of them are really special some of them are hidden some of them can only be crafted there's rares there's legendaries there may even be mythicals like the the level of attention to detail and quality there is a real turn on for the fat rats fans and that's why it would be expected that once the word gets out and they start getting comfortable with the idea of buying digital collectibles, that they would come and buy them on, on record shop. Um, the biggest problem is just that the mainstream fan doesn't even know what, what a digital collectible is. And if they think about an NFT, they're very likely to think, oh, that's killing the earth or that's like really greedy artists, you know, charging millions of dollars um, because there's a lot of FUD out there. And the mainstream audience is not an early crypto adopter. They don't know anything about crypto. They only know what they've maybe heard. They've seen that, you know, NFTs auction for millions of dollars. Their initial reaction is to think that it's not for them. So we got to break through that obstacle of whatever misconceptions they have. And the best way to do that is for the artist to tell them, like, they don't trust us. We're just like another startup, whoever, like, they don't know what record shop is, but they know who the fat rat is. And if the fat rat, you know, goes on his YouTube channel, it's got like 1.5 billion views, you know, with his hundreds of thousands of subscribers or whatever it is. I don't know the precise number, but you know, if he goes on there and he's like, look, this is cool. Like this, I'm investing a lot of energy into making these things and these are awesome. And this is how you're going to find out who the princess is or, you know, whoever it is, they're going to turn out. Like, there's no question that they're going to turn out. Um, and then it's just a matter of mapping that experience to other artists in a way that's authentic to them. Like, you know, Alesso is not the fat rat. Like he doesn't have a conceptual universe with characters and, you know, collaborators in corsets, you know, corsets and, you know, like stuff like that. Like that's just not, <laughs> that's not his brand. He's got another brand, right? Like e everyone has, potential to do some sort of conceptual framework for their music. And maybe for some artists, it doesn't even need to have a conceptual framework. Like if an artist um, who has a hardcore following for their music says to their fan base, the way I want you to support me is by buying my music here rather than listening to it somewhere else. It's the same reason that Bandcamp is killing it, right? Like, because that's what, that's what artists are doing. They have a following, they go to Bandcamp, they say I'm exclusively on Bandcamp, now this is where I want you to buy my music. End of story. The same thing will happen with Record Shop. Like once they see that ownership is a thing, once they see that fans are willing to, to buy limited edition music, that it's worth an order of magnitude more as a result of being limited edition, that it has appreciation potential, that there's royalties on the secondary market, you'd have to be out of your mind to not come over to this model. 
So at that point, it's a question of whether they're going to come to Record Shop or some of the other myriad competitors that spring up, uh, you know, to take advantage of this opportunity. And we think that will be really, really far ahead of the curve. Like if you go to see some of our main competitors, like One of and Yellowheart and stuff like that, like, yeah, some of them have a lot of money. Some of them got out in front of ahead of us. But like, I think that we've shown uh, that our technical cap capabilities are very strong and that our ability to recruit top tier talent is very, very strong. So I think all those things put together mean that in 2022, we break out, uh, you know, and get ahead of the pack. Yeah, I think you bring up a really good point there. Like the idea that the artists need to come here, but also like that it's just going to be the the economically viable path for a lot of artists. And I think we're already starting to see some of that for some of the people that are working with us. Um, you know, once you can make that call to action, like, look, like I'm basically getting screwed on the, by these other platforms, but I finally found a place where, you know, we can work together and I can survive as an artist. I think that's a much more compelling um, kind of argument to, to come support me here, come enjoy this new technology that puts together these unique experiences that you don't really have access to now. Um, so that's what I'm really, really excited for as we start to see that shift happen more and more. And even just seeing like little inklings of it gets me like <laughs> super stoked already. Um, I want to, I think I answered Big D Energy's um, question as an investor in platform. What are we doing to get ahead of other music NFTs? Um, thanks for asking that question. The, I know that there's some other questions in the chat that we'll get to. I want to answer J Bones. Um, that, yeah, we're closing out, we're going to stop dropping Genesis packs and we're going to focus on themed and, and artist packs next year. Um, and he asked, will my 25 lepto just be a cute green thing in my album? Um, I can't answer that. I know that Mason has plans to drop a new set. Um, I know that they're engaged with the platform. Maybe this is a good opportunity to say, like, your time frames are orders of magnitude faster than what can reasonably expect, you know, be expected for most artists. You know, artists are busy in the studio, touring, and, you know, doing all the other fun stuff that artists do. And until this becomes their main bre bread and butter, like, th they're not going to give it the kind of priority that they could give it. You know, and it's a question of the faster that we get their real fans on here. I feel bad saying real fans. I'm sure that some of you are, you know, consider yourselves real fans of Mason, you know, because you got his set, you like the music, you like the artwork. I don't want to call you not a real fan. As long, you know, it's like, as long as the only fans that are in here are kind of like new fans that are maybe mixed in with the whole NFT bunch and, you know, are this new thing called Record Shop and it's not the fans that he sees at shows that he sees, you know, that are his uh, top posters on Facebook, you know, like the people I followed for a long time. It's, you know, it's hard. It's hard to see the attention being put in. I think Kaiser, uh, Disco Fries, um, Solar Stone. What you see there is that they're big, big believers in the platform. You know, they're big, big believers in the phenomenon of moving to this style of digital collectibles and the way that, um, you know, the direction that record shop is going in. And I see some of you like Midwest, um, saying, why did you buy generation one collectibles? Um, why are Pokemon, you know, why are first generation Pokemon's valuable? Like you just got to think in a longer time frame, man. I'm, it's like, it's really, really frustrating to get crucified for why gen, you know, why am I holding gen one? Like sell them. Sell them if you don't want them. You know, Gen 1, if we are indeed the future of music five to 10 years from now, are going to be very valuable, clearly. Like, did you put more money into Gen 1 than, than you could afford to with your liquidity concerns? That's not our fault. That's not our fault. I, I hate to put it in such blunt terms, but that's not our fault. Like, you can't put that on us. Like, we have been consistently saying... Uh, that we are long, you know, we're in a long term play. I even said that flippers would not be happy, right? Like, what I mean by flipper is someone that's looking to come in and just make a short term profit, you know, without caring what the what the what the uh, product is. Like, do we have plans for generation generation one artifacts? Yes, 
Absolutely, yes. And we drop hints about that all the time. Like I, I make nuggets and things like that. A lot of that stuff has not been implemented, has not been rolled out. Simply, all right, I'm sorry, Big D. I didn't mean to say crucified, but you know, people have been calling me NFT Jesus. So I guess I riffed on that. But you know, the, 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 point, is, the point is, we do have plans for some of that stuff, the stuff that we control, right? Like we have artifacts. Um, what do we have, you know, that's probably going to see some, some movements. I'm not even going to say it because then it's going to move the market. I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say ones that have been openly discussed as having value, which is like, for instance, the plus one to recharge, um, you know, lighters. And I did say openly that plus one would have other uses as well. So if you want to speculate on plus ones, probably a good move, you know, but if you needed to have value like next week, you know, or a month from now, probably not a good move, you know, cause I'm not exactly sure when that's going to come. Right. Like, uh, Maddie was in here. I don't know if she's left, you know, or whatever, but she was like the drag queen queen, you know, had a lot of drag queens and stuff like that. Like, I think that's super cool. Like we do have some cool, you know, utility plan for drag queens. Do I know when exactly when it's going to roll out? No, I don't know when exactly when it's going to roll out. You know, it might roll out two months from now. It might roll out six months from now. It might roll out 12 months from now. And to the extent that we didn't properly convey that, you know, we're not sufficiently um, communicating that to the com community, I'm sincerely sorry. Like, I, I thought that we had done a good enough job of saying like, hey, we're doing the best that we can in terms of rolling this out. We'll give you a roadmap, you know, to try to explain it, to try to make some commitments so you guys can hold us to it. But, but a lot of this utility is just technically complex. And we've been dealing with stuff behind the scenes with a lot of demands on our engineering department that we don't we don't even show you know just for very practical reasons like we're busy rearranging everything that has to do with how we do payments i i've said multiple times we're very busy getting off shopify um we have very good reasons for for that you know do i want to go out and like scream that from the rooftops and publish blog posts about it and put it in public places no you know toby the ceo of shopify is one of our investors you know, so so like it is a, it is a complicated situation that we're in and we don't have infinite amounts of engineering resources. So we're doing the best that we can. And, you know, as we grow and professionalize and have more people and the different roles that are required to, for instance, do a better job of communicating, doing a better job of managing the community, stuff like that, we'll we'll start doing that. And I, I took a lot of counsel from Danvers and Soci, you know, Sociotechnica's videos saying, hey, like, Obi, stop trying to be everything to everyone, stop trying to do all the coding and all the community management, all that stuff. He's, he's absolutely right. Like I was very, um, humbled and chastened by that. And I'd send them a big thank you. And I admitted it on, on uh, discord as well and said, look, I really got to take a step back and, and let the, the rest of the team do their job. Well, great as, answer. One those, as one of those team members, it's it. Uh, and again, coming from the user point of view back a whole month ago now, <laughs> um, it's been, you know, I find it surprising sometimes to see our community really expect so, so much when we've been around since August, we're December now, it hasn't even been six months. Um, it's pretty amazing. And if anybody has worked in a technology department at a big company, let alone a startup, things don't move that fast just because you have human beings working for you who aren't machines and you know they need to sleep on weekends and you know they have they have to go to weddings and all of that stuff so um there's a balance of being a human and uh making sure people get their rest and i guess exactly what sociotechnica was saying like oh we can't be everything to everyone at all times two seconds from now <laughs> Right. So I, I really appreciate you coming on today. You know, we're getting close to the time that you had. I don't know how much extra time you have for us. Um, um, I have a look. I, I know there's some other like kind of burning questions. I think I have a little more time. Let me just check my schedule. Yeah, I'm good till the top of the hour, actually. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Obi was playing therapist has been. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, I, I, I've been told I can be intimidating and especially in this kind of format. Um, like I know I speak kind of strongly sometimes and I hope I'm not, um, 
I hope you don't take the wrong thing. I'm talking to the community directly here. Like, I, I, I hope you don't take the wrong thing from me kind of being animated and kind of speaking a little more bluntly than I usually do. But this is a different kind of format, right? Like, this is specifically for the community. This is not for outsiders. And I do want to express a certain amount of frustration while at the same time staying humble and saying, look, you, you guys give us a lot of constructive criticism. We do listen. Um, Cade spends a lot of time uh, compiling these things, you know, and putting them into spreadsheets. We, our product group does look at suggestions and has like tons and tons of items in our backlog. Those of you who have been involved in software development understand what a backlog is. And we do try to prioritize the things that would add the most value and to keep everything going. And we, we do look at all the stakeholders that we have in this project, including people like, uh, J-Bone, like, like Finn, like, um, Big D, you know, who have very legitimate questions. Like they see themselves as investors and we see you as investors as well, um, as long-term investors in this platform, because those of you that were in this early, it stands to reason, I can't guarantee you, but it stands to reason that your holdings, your early holdings are going to be worth a lot in the future someday, given the type of success that we're aiming for. Um, so to those of you that see yourselves as investors, I would say, please do see yourselves as investors. That's a good thing. Investors don't generally look for like one month returns. That's not, that, that's called gambling. You know, you know, the, the minimum investment you should be looking at is, is probably on, you know, six to 12 months kind of time frame when we start hitting those next plateaus. Um, and, and those of you that really want, you know, want to be a a big part of this, you should be looking at multi-year time frames because we are aiming to do a five to ten year revolution. There's a reason we call it that. It's not just marketing. Like we really are going out there and talking to artists and talking about be part of a re revolution that's going to change all of music. So, <laughs> Big D, I love you, man. Like, listen, that's the reason I just kind of half-assed apologized, you know, and said like, please don't take this the wrong way. I'm not meaning to yell at you guys. I'm, I'm, this is me. This is the unvarnished me. Um, I don't have PR people whispering in my ear telling me, um, you know, what I should say or not say. Um, you're not talking to our chief commercial officer, Eric, who has, you know, who's an MBA and has a 20 year background in big corporations and who probably know exactly what to say in the professional MBA way. Uh, you know, to be very safe and make sure like no one fucking sues us at some point. Not like, no, that's not me. Right. Like, that's not what you're getting here. You, you're getting raw, unvarnished OV. I'm not mad at you. I'm appreciative. I'm grateful. You know, I see this as kind of an extended family that is trying to do something significant for the world, not just to make a quick buck. So and you, you know, it, we are rolling out withdrawals. You know, the people that did you know, that do need the money that are just upset or don't want to be here anymore. Like we'll find a way to make you good and we'll find a way to help you get out. You know, it's not personal as business. You know what it is? It is a little more personal than you might expect. You know, I think that's the, that's part of what we're trying to get here. Um, very early in the project, I said, listen, you know, our main thing we should be focused on is the community. And what we do with it like you guys um lisa you weren't around but chris remembers um chris would especially remember it since uh he's our community manager and it's um sorry i got distracted by reading the chat ted says obi what you're currently saying is why you need executives to help you yeah we're we're in the process of bringing on a cmo um, which is really going to help because until now, you know, we haven't really had that kind of competency and that shows, uh, we've just hired senior VP level people to be kind of program managers on kind of getting into the nitty gritty of our business, but it's important for you, you know, to the extent I see you as investors, I'll give you that kind of information. I'll give you a look behind the curtain, right? Like we just hired, um, a very experienced industry professional named Leah. Um, she's going to be an, an SVP of drops and the idea is that we have someone uh, who is able to take all the different considerations into account, right? Like we have creative relations going, artists need to get out. And we have uh, finance going, we need revenue. And we have a uh, community going, we need to not, you know, oversupply because people are going to get hurt. And we have, you know, two other departments with opinions. 
you know, we have the content production department going, you know, we don't have enough content. You know, it's a, uh, it's hard, right? So like we're hiring someone for that. We're hiring someone to run challenges. Uh, we're hiring more designers so that, you know, we can do a better job and turn around uh, collectibles quickly. Like it kills me that we didn't have the challenges ready right away, but the community department staffing up, uh, you know, in terms of the right kind of design people and campaign people. Um, we're staffing up in, ter in terms of copywriters and professional communicators because that has been a weakness, you know, for us over time. And, you know, we're getting almost 100 people, which means that at this point, it, it's becoming more of just a coordination challenge because the, we have the right people that need, you know, that can do their, the jobs that need to be done. So. I'm just catching up with some of the chat. So some of you are writing a lot of stuff here. It's cool. Um, yeah, glad that everyone came with their questions. It's nice. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Uh, WTDGT, the community, fantastic. The only thing is, it seems I get more info from community members, recaps, and any staff official info seems to come out in bits and pieces all over the place. It's true. We need to do a better job of that. I mean, I'm a lot of my professional uh, career success over the last 20 years is due to blogging. That's why kind of one of my favorite mediums is blogging, uh, no pun intended. And the, um, you know, I would like more record shop people like John, like Andrew, uh, and then you find folks over at, in the community team to do more blogging, you know, so that people can go to the blog and read, you know, to their heart's content and kind of do a deep dive on, on everything that's going on. Uh, the other thing that we want to incentivize is an active ecosystem of information coming out through YouTube videos and third party, you know, uh, kind of channels like Sociotechnica did, like AMP, NFT. Um, we may not currently be at the scale to support like a huge striving ecosystem, but in 2022, we're going to get there. Um, at that point, I think you'll see people doing reviews of the content we put out. I think you'll see unboxing videos. I think you'll see strategy guides. I think you'll see third-party blogs, you know, kind of talking about what's going on here in news. And I want to incentivize that. Like we have a really, really cool rocks design for a press pass. That's like super, super cool. And I want to, I want to, us to airdrop that. And I, I mentioned it to the community team. And I think you guys are working into your plans, right? Mm -hmm. As a way of recognizing third-party, um, you know, ecosystems, extended family, like AMP NFT, um, you know, who else is there? Real Phil, you know, kind of like yeah. people that have promoted us and help amplify information, um, you know, just to, to reward them, I guess, is, a, you know, is, is important. Um, and also to to incentivize them to keep doing more. Um, yeah, I'm sorry for the chaos. I know that I know that it's been a mess. I know. Also, I know that it's it's been really, really important. If you want to, like, take full advantage of the game and be in on everything, you have to really be in the discord. And the Discord can get super, super chaotic and can occupy a lot of time. And that can, itself can get frustrating. Like if it's frustrating for you out there in the community who doesn't even work for a record shop, imagine how frustrating it is for me, you know, trying to like read every word posted to general chat uh, and also do like, you know, three other jobs at record shop. So um, we're working on it, <laughs> you know, and expect big, big evolution of that in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw a hyped up Zach's question. Are there going to be future agreements when signing up new artists to be engaged in the platforms? And I'm pretty sure we have those in place. It's again, just our ability to, to give our artists a, a platter and say, here are, here are the things you can do with us. We're working on that too, on giving them that those options and saying, here, try A, B, C, or here's our, here's our menu of things you can do with us. So it's a bit on us. Yeah, I saw that Midwest um, is talking, you know, is recognizing that we've had awesome awards. Thank you for that. Um, those were not easy to negotiate. Um, and they're going to cost us serious cash. And we're going to do more, you know, we plan, we plan to do more, we think that it's important to have that kind of in real world utility and you know, it's kind of critical to getting the word out. The biggest challenge is not making people aware. If it was just making people aware, we just do like huge ad campaigns. The problem is making them understand what to do. Um, like when, when we, 
half the time when we do some of these campaigns, people come in and they, they're so confused, right? Like even just sending someone to buy a collectible. Uh, I saw this when we were in Mexico City a few weeks ago. Like we sent we sent people to buy collectibles, Solar Stone fans. And they showed up and they didn't know what the heck to do. Like there were people that wanted to go to the after party. It's like, go buy a wristband. They, they go to the wristband page and there's like 25 different prices for a wristband. To the average person who doesn't understand what an NFT is, what a digital collectible is, why, they're like, why are there 25 different prices? Which one am I supposed to buy? Like it, it's so second nature to those of us that are in this world. And we, that I think we lose sight of how bizarre it is that someone for to someone that's not in this world, like ju- oh, that was just a, that yeah. was a takeaway from our uh, retrospective with the fat rat today, right? That the wristband that was right. one of the takeaways that it was a barrier because our the fat rat users had to go get a wristband and then wait a certain amount of time. So how can we make that easier for them? Right, right. So like we're gonna we're gonna change that. You know, it's um. Yeah we're having to find ways to innovate and deviate from the original formula and to deviate from what works in an NFT context, because these are not NFT people, you know, like if you're a fan of NFTs and you understand what minting an NFT is and what the drop is and the dates and the urgency and selling out and all that stuff, like you get it, but that you're in the, very small minority of people in the world. Most people don't get it. They don't have the time uh, or patience or energy to do it. So we're having to learn and refine. And what you're going to see happen for the future fat rat drops, since we're so focused on getting those fans, is that it's going to be different. You know, we're going to extend the pre-sale periods and we're like, we're going to do other things to make sure that those fans can get their hands on the product. Uh, because once they're in and they're playing the game and they're participating, then it's a different story. Then they learn. And it means in the, you know, that then they can understand what it means to participate and they can learn from other community members and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, normies, I mean, without normies, like this is a dud, right? That's my biggest fear. My biggest, biggest fear that, you know, sometimes keeps me up at night is that we're just way too early. Right. That we're not Amazon in like 1998, that we're at Amazon in 1995 or, you know, something along those lines. Um, and that it just might be too heavy of a lift. We might be too ahead of time, um, you know, for this to actually take root. And that if we don't play our cards right, we will we'll burn out before we actually get to, to, you know, the rest of the world catches up to us. I have full belief that this is the future. You know. Um, I just don't know for sure if this is five to 10 years out or 20 years out because 20 years out is a whole different story. Like we probably have to do something else in the meantime, if we're going to stick around 20 years. <laughs> um, but you know, that's, that's what makes it fun. There's only one way to find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Like I said, I do have another meeting at the top of the hour, but, cool. but this was, this was great. We should do like this, you know, once a month or something like that would be amazing. And you guys are doing a great job, by the way. I, 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 I'm I'm loving seeing the growth of the community team, and I think um, I think now in December, and you know, especially in 2022, as I, you know, have my Discord uh, access revoked, uh, <laughs> you're gonna. I deleted it off my phone. I'm gonna ban you. Gonna... I'll just ban you. How wow. about that, Obi? <laughs> I, I, li- I literally that. I literally deleted Discord off my phone. It, it's not here anymore. I used I used to have it right on my homepage, and it's not there anymore. I deleted Discord. it, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm not gonna put it back. Thanks. So, <laughs> all right. Well, Sweet. I really enjoyed this. Thanks, thanks Lisa. So much, thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Obi. Thanks, I'm everyone. Do- drop off now. Uh, thanks to Cade and to Astrofusion for uh, monitoring and for pulling out all the questions for us. Really, really appreciate you. And don't forget to follow us. Make sure you can catch our next stream. We've got some great stuff coming up this week too. We've got uh, Solar Stone uh, on Wednesday to wrap up the challenge. And tomorrow we've got a great stream with Scumfrog. So we're going to be playing his film. So we'll be able, I know I've seen some questions in the chat about that too. So make sure you check us out 
Uh, tomorrow, the schedule is on our Twitch channel, just because the different time zones, I won't say our, the time. By the, way, By the way, sorry to interrupt you. The Solar Stone Challenge, from what I hear, was amazing at the end and produced drama and was a lot more interesting than everyone, than everyone expected it to be. So it's good I to was, hear. Yay. I was happy when I heard about that. So. Yeah, it looked like it was fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I'll see you. Right, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Thank yep. you. Okay, everyone. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Yeah. See you.